All right, there we go. Okay, we're live. Okay, excellent. Very good. The system's working. I think we have, uh, I see here, and I'm here, and Mayor Wells is here. We have uh, attendees. We have 14 people so far. People are still uh, coming on board. Hey, Alan, Phil, Phil Ortiz there. Uh, Eric Anderson, hi, Eric. Anthony. Um, so for those of you um, that are, most of you have probably not been on this uh, platform before. This is called Webinar Jam. It's not Zoom. It's not uh, obviously Go to Meeting. So this is supposed to play in your browser, so nothing to download, and uh, it allows us to be interactive as well. You'll see we'll have some polls and we'll have uh, some um, some other things that come up on the screen. And we can uh, there's a chat window. Uh, if you guys are all familiar with that, if you can type in the chat window just something. Hey, we hear you. Tony, you look particularly stunning today. You know, anything like that uh, would be okay to put in the, the chat box there just so we see it's working. And that's, uh, feel free to kind of keep the conversation going. Hi, Stacy. Uh, and uh, you can type in your questions there as we go along as well. And then uh, I might call on you to, and bring you up into the, into the room and you can ask your question uh, live, so to speak, uh, using your microphone. And if you want to be on camera, you can do that too. Hey, Brian. Uh, okay. Oh, Bill, everything's good. Rita, how are you? Um, Gloria, looking good. Can you see the chat room, Mayor? I want to make sure you can follow along there if, if you spot anything. Hey, Eric. So, are you able to see that, Bill? The chat window there. Hey, Bill, can you hear us? I think Bill might be having some issue. Okay, we have still people coming on board. Hi, Stacy. I don't know. I think anybody here looks uh, stunning, Alan, but uh, thank you. Uh, Mayor, can you hear us? Let me see. For some reason, I have some construction going on here in my building. So if you hear some drilling and whatever, jackhammering, that's, that's not me. Uh, Bill can't hear us. Let me see if I can go to his text. Uh, uh, let me see here. Bill. Hi. There we go. Tony? Oh, there you are. Yeah. Don't mute yourself. Can you hear us now? Oh, your mic goes in and out. Tony, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. We have your mic now. Don't don't mess with the setting now. Oops. We can see you, and can you say something? Okay. Well, Bill is trying to get the, that working. I want to do, we're going to try something. We have 20 people here now, so I want to keep, uh, I'm Tony Kovarik. I'm small businessman here and uh, local Republican Party chairman, although this is not uh, uh, partisan necessarily. The mayor has been gracious to uh, join us and hopefully he'll join us here uh, uh, with his microphone as well uh, in a minute. So, but in the meantime, I want to do a little poll. We're going to try the polling feature. And there's one big question that everybody's grappling with these days that it consumes every conversation. And no, it's not what you think, but uh, so let's see if the polling feature works on this. And so, uh, Let's see here, and I'm gonna put the poll out, and so you guys take the poll. And we'll see. Uh, okay, Bill, just. Hello? Yeah, there you are. We can hear you now, we just can't see you. It's either seeing you or hearing you. Okay, but we have a poll going. Have you watched Tiger King on Netflix? 
This is the one question that's consuming everybody. Focus. And um, so I'm going to all wish, wish to vote. Please vote. I'm going to end the poll. And okay, you should all be seeing the results of the poll. Let me know if you guys saw the results of the poll. Hello, anybody there? I'm here. Hey, Bill. Hello, that's interesting. There we go. There we, go. we can hear you, we can see you. Okay. Can you say something, Bill? Still can't hear you. That was fun. Okay, you guys saw the, the polling results. That's great. Okay, good, good. So I'm in the last camp, uh, no way two overhyped camp, so I'm holding out. Uh, but uh, what's Tiger King? That's good. All right, let's see here. We can see you, Bill, but not hear you. This is great. This is awesome troubleshooting in life. Everybody there? There we go. You're there. Hello? Yes. Does that work? Yeah. Don't change anything now. That looks good. No? Yeah. We can hear you. We can hear you fine. Can you say something? Okay, there you go. Let me try for this. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's the headphones. Who knows? All right, let's see something in the chat. Uh, okay, did see the results. Okay, while we're working on that, why don't we do a... Uh, let's see here. Let's type with the bill here. Yes, test. Okay, we can hear it now. Can you? Bill Wells has joined the room. You're joining in multiple ways here. Okay, I think he's trying it. Hello. Over. Hey, Tony, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. You can turn off the other one then, I guess. Uh, hold on. Yeah, I, I, sir, I went to the iPhone. Okay. Uh, can you put your camera on? Uh, now I can't get the, the video. Isn't that great? Yeah. <sighs> Hold on a second. There we go. Okay. All, all right. right. We're all right. Good. 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 Okay. So I'm gonna minimize. Get rid of the other one. Can you X out of the other one, Bill? Whatever's on your computer. Uh, yeah, I thought I had. Um, yeah, yeah, I think I'm you? out. Okay. So let me see here. I'll just turn uh, this computer off. Yeah, well, that should do it. Uh, okay, all right, everybody. That was a great little uh, live uh, troubleshooting. I want to thank everybody for uh, for joining us uh, with the mayor, Bill. Thank you for uh, uh, for joining us. Hi, and, sorry uh, about the uh, tech technical problems, but well, you know, it's the Russians. You know, they're always meddling in our in our <laughs> business. Uh, so, uh, but I wanted to you know bring everybody together. We have. Uh, about 20 people here uh, with us and uh, almost everybody from El Cajon, I'm sure. Uh, and uh, so uh, can you just, we'll have some questions back and forth, but uh, maybe you can let us know how El Cajon uh, is doing and uh, just generally what's what's El Cajon doing about this? Uh, how are you coping under COVID? And then um, any particular things that are that are happening that we may not know about in El Cajon. It's a great city, and uh, sometimes there are things going on, uh, efforts being made, or even just great deeds being done by ordinary citizens that we don't know about. So, uh, maybe give us a couple minute minutes from uh, off the top of your head about El Cajon and COVID and efforts going forward. Well, first off, I think it's important to say that I'm proud of everybody. Everybody's done what we asked them to do. They stayed in the house. They put their masks on. They washed their hands. And they've waited for this month to be over so that we can get back to normal. I think there's um, 
some people are concerned that this is going to drag on for a little bit. And we can talk about that obviously later. Um, I, I personally feel like we need to cautiously look at reopening. And uh, I, I wonder, I worry seriously about what's going to happen to the lives of people that are not going to work. Um, what's going to happen to people that own small businesses, people that own large businesses for, for that matter for the restaurants and the, all the other places that can't be open. So I'm, I'm pretty concerned about that, but we have to be cautious about it. We have to uh, move forward without putting anybody at overt risk. And then there's the other problem is that most of the responsibility of this lies with the governor. Uh, it's, it seems kind of amazing that one person would have that much power, but um, really it, there's only so far we can go without superseding the, the governor's orders. So we have to be cautious of that as well. But we, I'd, I'd love to ask, answer questions about all that. El Cajon has been busy trying to do as much as we can. We've uh, taken several hundred thousand dollars out of the general fund, and we've, we've started uh, loans for small businesses. We've uh, started the uh, – we've really helping with food uh, delivery programs, uh, specifically um, delivery programs to seniors and people that can't get out of the house. But we've also um, partnered with several groups in El Cajon offering more food security for people that that might not normally have uh, financial problems, but have financial problems as a result of uh, being on the quarantine. So we've we spent a lot of time doing that. We've also invested some money in a program that people can, can access if they're about to lose their house for some reason, if they're they, they're, they're behind on the house payment or behind on the rent payment. They can access some money on a one-time basis to keep them off the streets. And I think that's really important, an important part of helping with homelessness and especially with people that are struggling with this COVID-19 issue. And Tony, with that, why don't I just uh, take questions? Yeah, uh, one question that was sent in was, uh, what about the Wednesday night car shows? Um, and uh, and what, uh, you know, when can they begin again? That was one person's question. Well, that's a good question. Um, right now, uh, the governor's order would prohibit that. He, he, it would uh, not let that happen. We, we have to um, stay within the, ba the boundaries of that. But um, that's something we're looking at. We have to find a way to do it without getting lots of people together. And it, it seems like the very nature of the car show is lots of people being together. I think that... More realistically, we'll see uh, shops and restaurants open to a limited degree before we'll start seeing things like the car show and America on Main Street. When this first started, I couldn't imagine this going on to the summer, but it seems to be dragging on. So we're going to wait and see what happens. Uh, uh, you've, you've, um, sometimes people uh, think that you know, you're the, the the decider, if you will, for and. and I guess that's flattering in one way, but in another way, you have uh, layers above you that you, you operate within. What's been, uh, we've had two super county supervisors pushing um, to open safely in a, in a balanced way and start making preparations uh, with Kristen Gaspar and um, uh, uh, Supervisor Desmond. Uh, they had a motion to, you know, set things in, uh, prepare to open up, you know, uh, by May 1st. What, what's been your... Uh, uh, connection with the county? Do, do you uh, uh, are you being listened to? And then, of course, we hope that the county then puts some pressure on the governor. It really, since they seem to be dragging their feet, you have the president kind of pushing in one direction. Then you have uh, this kind of a mishmash of, of authority and decisions. So, how are you operating with our county <coughs> people, and are they listening to you? Well, first off, this is new to all of us, and what I saw in the beginning of this was a tremendous amount of confusion. Uh, people didn't know who had authority. Um, people didn't didn't know who could make decisions and who couldn't make decisions. I can tell you what I what I believe for right now is that the city of El Cajon, we continue to make decisions about how we're going to enforce the governor's edict. So, a, a lot of times we'll have people call up and say, "Hey, go over to this taco shop and close them down," or. Um, go over to this hardware store and close them down because they're not essential businesses. And we're not going to get involved in deciding who's essential and who's not essential because 
anybody can make the case that their business is essential. And, and lots of people are making very good arguments that their businesses are, are essential. Um, what we've decided to do is to make sure that people aren't gathering in large meetings that say, if you wanted to have bingo at your, at your church, um, we would probably step in and say, Hey, that's a bad idea to get three or 400 people together in one room. Um, but if um, the hardware store was open and you didn't feel like that was essential and you called us and wanted us to send police officers out there, shut them down, we wouldn't be doing that because as long as the hardware store was uh, following appropriate social distancing and wearing the masks and all the precautions that people are taking and letting only so many people in the store at one time, uh, we wouldn't get involved in that in, in shutting them down. So, uh, Tony, does, does that make sense? Yeah, I think it's regard? a good, uh, it's, it's, it's you know, refreshing. I mean, that there's, there's got to be, you know, for laws to be upheld, you know, they have to kind of make sense. If people are following the precautions and maybe they're, I think it's it, there's a backlash if people start you know arresting people. We've seen some pictures of, you know, especially the one surfer gentleman who was out surfing, and then the two boats and a couple of deputies you know chasing him on the beach just didn't quite. Um, so you know, I can I can tell you that in El Cajon we've not um, arrested anybody, we've not given any fines. Uh, we have gone to certain uh, groups of people, and we've talked to them and asked them to not have that meeting. Uh, and people have been real compliant about that. It, it's it's all been good natured so far. Um, so that's that's the stance we're taking. And unless we're forced to by the governor, we're we're not going to do anything more than that. Um, you have Eric ca County too, but uh, we can get back to that view. Um, Eric, yeah, Eric has a question here. I might actually try see if see if I can bring uh, see if I can bring Eric in here. As a presenter, I don't know. I'm gonna live to regret this, technology-wise, maybe. <laughs> but let's see if, because uh, it's supposed to be work where I can. Eric, you should be getting something on your screen. You can open your microphone and/or your, your camera, and then you can ask your question. Uh, we'll see that. Uh, I know you weren't maybe ready for that, Eric. Maybe you left uh, for a second, but um, let's see here. Well, here's. Let's see. Um, What's happening with the, the homeless people in El Cajon, I guess? That's another question here. Is Eric, is that your question? What's no, happening? No, no, I'm waiting for Eric. Um, I invited him as a presenter, so we'll see if he responds. But uh, while he waits to get on, there was a question about homeless. And uh, yes. you know, while you're waiting for that, let me, let me give you some statistics. We talked about some of the things that El Cajon's doing to help in this case. Uh, the city council at the April 14th meeting sent $50,000 aside for senior food delivery. That comes from the general fund. $100,000 for food security programs from the general fund. $300,000 for utility assistance. I, I think that's really important because, you know, people who can't pay their, because they're not working, they can't pay their electric bill. They can't pay, pay their um, uh, water bill. This is really going to help with that. Uh, $10,000 for free online recreation classes, $250,000 for additional shelter space, hotel vouchers, and safe parking programs, and $200,000 for rapid rehousing. So that gives us a, a little bit more context there. Uh, Bill, so where do how do people, you know, avail themselves of any of that aid? Is that through the website? Is that yeah? You go to the the, the the city of Oklahoma's website. And there's uh, places to apply for that. If you have any trouble, uh, you can contact me through the website as well and let me know what the problems are and make sure somebody gets to you and helps you get through the, the red tape or whatever you need to get through. What is, um, uh, maybe I'll put your, your email up. But what's your city uh, email? I'll put B. that up Wells for, yeah. At cityofelcajon.us. Okay, so I'm going to put that uh, here, post. So there should be something on the top of your guys' screen because ewells at cityofelcajon.us. So I'll put that there. That way if people have you – know, it will stay there for the, for the duration of the, uh, uh, of the event. And just so you know, we're not billing anybody for sewer during this period of time. They'll eventually get their bill, but we're, we're deferring that for the time being. We're discounting our recreation classes. Um, we're softening our – temporary banners and signs for businesses so that people can go ahead and make signs saying we're open for takeout and things like that. So we're, we're trying, we're doing everything we can to, to try to make it easy for people to survive through this crisis. 
what's the uh, what's the status on the on the car dealers out there? Are they closed or no? No, they're still uh, most of them are still open. They're taking appointments. They're uh, meeting outside when they can under tents because that's a lot safer if you're not indoors. And they're using masks and gloves and they're being careful. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, let's see here. Uh, D Wells at City of Carol, you, you 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 caught my spelling error there. There we go. It's B Wells, not E Wells. Um, uh, oh, Roger. Hey, Roger. Uh, okay, let's see. What else do we have? Uh, well, Eric is, is stepped away. But he said, "Did you see the the um, the doc uh, the doc doctors in Kern or Riverside County? I think it was um, that's going on on YouTube. The two emergency room doctors that are giving a more balanced approach to some of this and voicing the, how m many of us feel. And you know, one of them is." Being cooked up in the house, you know, you're, you're, uh, that's a lot of, uh, you know, you might be healthier, you know, being outside and getting, getting more fresh air. So, uh, well, you know, I have heard, I, I've, I heard their video, and I think there's a lot of, uh, common sense in that. There's you know, something I want to talk about that I, I, I want people to be aware of. And I want to bring this into your thinking. Um, the county has public health people on staff. They have doctors and, and other epidemiologists on staff that are working for them. And what I have seen by being involved in all the meetings is that there's been a generalized um, abdicating of responsibility to these doctors, to these public health officials. Basically, what elected officials are, are saying is that, well, I'm not an expert in, in public health. So I'm going to leave it to these folks to decide. Well, I think that's a very dangerous situation because they only have one agenda, and that is to reduce deaths and reduce the number of people that get sick from the virus, which is a, a very good thing to want to do. However, there are other parts of this that they're not considering. You know, they're not considering what happens to businesses. They're not considering what happens to people when they can't pay their rents and they can't pay their mortgage, they can't buy a car, they can't pay their car payments. They're not considering what happens uh, to the people's mental health when they spend prolonged periods of time locked down inside. And because of this, we've always had represented the elected officials because elected officials are expected to make broad kind of decisions based upon all the factors. And I was thinking about this this morning, I was thinking, imagine if John F. Kennedy, instead of acting with resolve during the Cuban Missile, missile Crisis, he had to get the consensus of a group of bureaucrats or perhaps a committee that he had formed, it seems unlikely that he ever would have been able to make the decision he, he made, which ended up saving us. And I think if you look at Winston Churchill, um, he oftentimes had to make hard decisions that were not popular, but, but decisions that had to be made in order to protect all of the people. And so I want people to think about that, that the public health officials are great resources and tools, but they are consultants. They work for us, We're not we don't work for them. And they're not calling the shots. Your elected officials should be calling the shots, but I don't think for the most part they are. Uh, I think you're, you're, you're spot on that. I had an earlier one. There's really only one person's opinion that matters. It's a very qualified uh, person. You know, that's uh, Wilma Wooten, I think the lady uh, at the county. Um, yeah, but, uh, but, and that's, that, that's, I, I know I, you said it perfectly, but uh, there's no, but there should be somebody that's accountable uh, to, to the voters to, to make these decisions, you know, for better or worse. And uh, uh, another analogy that I heard was, uh, you know, the generals don't, generals don't make war. And, you know, the, the president decides, you know, what are some big macro decisions that need to be made? You know, it's not exactly. up to us. So you have a civilian at the top of the military because the generals do one thing. They break things and blow things up and then win wars and conquer places, you know, or defend places. So, um, you know, but we use the, a civilian uh, directs them. So where this is especially as important is with the county board of supervisors. Um, it, it, because the county to my mind, it's the county board of supervisors that make it, they're making most of the knee jerk type of reactions, but you know, with the fines and the arresting people for going to the beaches and, and, you know, for coming out like, um, 
Nathan Fletcher came out and said that uh, gun stores should be closed because they're not essential. And I, I took him the task for that because um, gun stores are the one entity that actually has a constitutional amendment protecting them. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think you can certainly make a, a case that that having access to ammunition and and guns if you need them in a time of civil unrest is uh, is definitely a, a essential business. Um, we have, uh, there's a question here about uh, Live Nation, uh, partnership between Live Nation, successful. Uh, what's the status of that? I guess they're, they're losing money and so on. It, I don't live in El Cajon, but, but obviously it's, it's an issue that you're we were, familiar with. We were doing great before the COVID virus. Um, we had entered into a partnership with Live Nation, and we had projected that we would break even somewhere in our third year of operations. And we actually made a profit in our first quarter of operations. Um, it was very clear to us and a surprise to everybody, including Live Nation, I think, that it was as successful as it was. People from all over the county have been coming to shows, been a lot of great shows. And we were pretty sure that we had hit on something that was going to be super successful. Um, of course, they had to shut down like everybody else did with with all of this. And I'm completely confident that they'll jump right back up and we'll be successful again once we put this behind us. Yeah, hopefully, they, you know, that's the question is like, how many of these businesses are going to be able to you know, stick around? Um, with that, let's do another poll real quick. I want to find out, um, we've been talking a lot about COVID, obviously. So why don't we do another poll and I will see how people feel about that. Um, so let me go here, here, and um, I'm going to put that up. You should be seeing that coming up on your screen here in the last next few seconds, if not already. Basically, how do you feel about the coronavirus situation? Let's take the temperature of, of, of people in El Cajon. I'm very concerned, not ready to open things up. I'm concerned, but it's time to open things up responsibly. Or I feel the situation has been completely overblown. Let's apply common sense, open back up, or a weird combination of all of the above. So I know you're on your phone, Bill, so I don't know that you, you can see see any of this no, stuff I can't, I can't see it. You can tell me. But uh, we'll let you know. We're doing a poll here. and uh, <laughs> Is this uh, a poll of the people online right now? Yeah, it's yeah, just uh, yeah, the, the people that are online here. So it's it's not just this really significant, but it's uh, it certainly you probably give it a finger on the pulse of how people are feeling. So I'm uh, guessing that you folks online are a little bit more politically activated than your average folk person. But uh, yeah, well, I'll, I'll read you the, uh, the results here. Sorry. Oh, everybody who wishes to vote, vote. If you haven't already, I'm going to close the poll. And you should, everybody should see the results. Uh, basically, 66% uh, uh, say, I'm concerned, but it's time to open things up with the, the remaining 33% <coughs> saying, I feel the situation has been overblown. Let's apply, let's apply common sense and open back up. So people are definitely leaning towards getting back to business responsibly. And I think that's right where you've been echoing. Well, I agree. Um, Unfortunately, we're going to have to um, appeal to the governor of the state of California. We may not like his politics, and we may question his values. But I have to believe that he wants to do what's best. He's, he's, he's got the fate of 40 million people in his, in his hands. Um, I can't think of very, very many times where one person has so much control over a huge group of people. So my suggestion is that we write him letters, we, we contact our assembly people, we contact our state senators, and we don't yell at them and we don't tell them why they're idiots. We appeal to them and say, we appreciate the fact that you wanna keep us safe, but you've got to find some balance, some middle ground where we can continue to, to make a living and continue to be safe. And my suggestion is that you ease the restrictions for the younger people, uh, the people that are still going to be exposed to the virus, but they'll survive it. You take my son, Eli, he's a 22 year old paramedic. He's in perfect health. And if he got the COVID virus, his chances of dying would be about 0.8%. Uh, almost ins insignificant. Now, say somebody who's over 65 years old, 
they've got diabetes or, di- or maybe um, COPD and they get the COVID virus, virus they could possibly get a, be at a 50-50 uh, chance of surviving or not surviving. So my recommendations would be to open things up with uh, the masks still and with the social distancing, but let the younger people go back to work. Let them start earning money and spending money and encourage older people to stay in their homes until this is resolved. It's, I think if, the, if we could all reach out to our governor and to the people that I have influence on our governor, uh, that's our best hope at this point because we're not going to be able to go around him. You're, you're, uh, that's the approach Sweden has taken, really. They, Sweden has, uh, as you know, I'm from Sweden, so that's what they've taken approach. Stay home if you're concerned, if you're older, elderly, especially if you have underlying conditions, you know, stay home. Uh, and things are you know, generally working. Of course, you know, people will uh, uh, you know, die, and that, that's tragic. But I want to look at the flip side of that. I mean, you, you're a mental health professional, and so maybe yeah. you can talk. One of the things that's not being talked about, and you know where I'm going with this, is uh, you know, we're seeing on the TV every day how many people died, and you know, there's like a ticker almost. You know, you're watching that, and the way me- the media portrays that is so irresponsible because you're watching it. It's like a ticker. It's like a number. And so to the average person, or it seems like, okay, well, that means I'm next or something. And it's so, and there's so many horrible things that happen every day and people that pass. And if we ever had a ticker of how many people die of heart disease on our television every day, I think we'd all be in shock and, 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 and so on. So not, not, of course, not to minimize <laughs> any of that, but could you tell us the flip side of people being forced to live on top of each other? You know, people who are having, you know, people have mental issues and concerns uh, and are stressed out in normal in, in, in good times. So what does this do? What's the underside of this thing that we're not seeing? And I don't see anybody in the media talking about this. It's almost like it, it's, I'm, I know it's happening, but somehow it's being swept under the rug or at least not reported. Well, I wish that I could um, give you a study that tells you what we expect to happen, but there's not been no study on, on something like this because nothing like this has ever happened. Um, I, it, just, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that uh, there's certain things that are going to happen when, when people are stuck at home. Number one, they're going to get antsy and they're going to get frustrated and agitated and irritated with each other just by proximity. People, human beings aren't meant to uh, be on top of each other. My, my wife's a psychologist and I'm a psychologist and sometimes people ask me if we work together and I say, no, we'd like to stay married. And <laughs> <laughs> you know, the joke is, uh, it's funny, but it's, uh, you know, the truth is people weren't meant to, for the most part, to be together all day and then to be together all night and 24 hours a day. It's nice to have breaks every once. It's nice to go off and uh, go off to different works and have different lives and have different things to talk about. and different. So I think that's difficult. You add to that, um, obviously, when people are bored and they're trapped, they oftentimes resort to using drugs and alcohol. So I think we're going to see a, a huge increase in drug and alcohol abuse. That's going to have a corresponding effect with uh, uh, domestic violence and other problems like that. This is certainly going to bring in lots of other health problems that may eventually take as many, um, much of a toll as the COVID virus would. And we're going to have people that are going to uh, be depressed and some people are going to kill themselves and probably going to see a huge spike in the number of people that have killed themselves in this period of time uh, versus a period of time where there wasn't this. So I, I think it's something certainly worth looking at, looking at, and I think I don't think we should be ignoring it. I think we should be talking about it. There's a lot that you can do to help and make sure that you're talking to each other, that uh, at least we have the ability to reach each other through telecommunications. But you should be talking to your family. You should be talking to your friends. I specifically worry about people that live alone. Um, they're trapped in their homes. They can't see anybody. That can be very isolating. And I, I think back to the movie, um, oh, what was it? Uh, the Shining. And of course, that was supernatural. But you know, part of that movie was that this one family was stuck, isolated in the Overlook Hotel for an entire winter. I think the concept is true that that is very difficult for be people to be isolated for a prolonged period of time. So if you have somebody in your life that is isolated, uh, find a way to reach out to them. Okay. And Tony, I don't know. Do you want to talk about this some more? Or? 
No, I think this is. Uh, let, let's see. I'm looking at the. Uh, since I know you, you don't see the uh, uh, the chat box. I've Tim. Tim says here. Hey, I, I'm. Uh, I'm 63. I'm in great health. All right, way to go, Tim. Uh, and, and then he's asking about the golf courses. Uh, what's the status on those? Uh, are, is that a local decision? Is that fall under county? I, I would just. I have one person who's on this call who shall remain remain unknown unless they want to speak up. But they they were golfing today. I think they was in a different county. But um, what's the status on, on on golf? Well, you know, again, common sense, right? Um, so it's dangerous to go golfing, but it's not dangerous to go to Costco. <laughs> golfing, you're going to be with four other people outside in the sunshine. At Costco, you're going to be with 700 people inside. Um, it, it obviously is more dangerous to go to Costco than it is to go to golfing. And yet golfing is closed in some places and um, not in others. Um, I, I would be an advocate for opening up the golf courses. Um, you have to make sure that you're not um, doing that against the governor's order because we are a rule of law. We're, we're a nation of laws and a, and a state of laws, and I, I'm going to follow the law. But if there's room for, um, for us to open up the golf courses, I'm all for it. Yeah, I'm wondering if that's uh, if that's uh, uh, up to the county or not. I know there's some golf courses. Uh, well, the up. county's the county's going to say. So here's the here's the deal with that. It's a little scary. Um, the county says, and all counties are saying this, that they have no choice. They have to be at least as restrictive as the governor says, but they do have some latitude to be more restrictive. So counties can make laws or rulings that are actually more restrictive than what the governor says. And I'll give you a good example. My best friend in the world, Kevin Green, uh, is a pastor of a Calvary Chapel up in Mendocino County of Fort Bragg. <laughs> and he was doing podcasts for his sermons, and he was told by the county he needed to shut down because he was up there singing on stage. And singing was considered dangerous because it spread the virus out into the air. And, you know, his response was, does it go through the computer and, and infect people? Because he was alone in that building when he did that. And they eventually had to get an attorney and write letters. But so counties feel very emboldened right now to take a lot of control. Um, so we have to put pressure on our county supervisors not to give in to that temptation. At the very least, they should be more restrictive than the governor is saying. Right, right. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's interesting, uh, interesting time. I think the uh, the county we have the uh, Kristen Gaspar and Jim Desmond put a you know motion forward to open up uh, or have the rules and have things set up. I mean, the number one thing I hear from people, the small business owners, is you mentioned Costco. Like most of them have fewer people in them than Costco. Costco's a big business. If you're a small business uh, down on Elkhorn Boulevard or wherever it is, uh, and you have maybe a dozen people coming through your store at any one time, perhaps, or it's hairdressers or whatever. You know, you could you could make arrangements only four or five at a time. I mean, you know, we're all adults here, uh, and somehow uh, this uh, Costco is okay, but uh, you know, the neighborhood um, you know store selling other goods uh, isn't so. Uh, I think, you know, they're, yeah, so that's uh, very frustrating. Um, let's um, tell us something great that's uh, going on in El Cajon, some great experience you just had or or, or an organization or, or, or a resident or citizen that, that did something. You know, oftentimes, too often, I should say, we look to the government to provide solutions uh, when the real, real value lies in, you know, citizens organizing on their own finding a social ill or problem or need that needs to be, uh, be filled and uh, they just fill it, you know, no uh, government involvement needed. So perhaps anything uplifting that you've seen or heard oh, you know, in the last few days. It's not week. one particular thing. It's, it's everybody getting together. And, and I, I have been really amazed at how civil everybody's been with each other. They're, they're, they're treating each other with respect and dignity. We've got lots of people stepping up and stuff uh, like, uh, the Rock Church in Alcohol, they, they, they're helping pr provide uh, 
uh, food delivery services to our elderly folks and to, to other people like that. Um, the um, East County Transitional Living Center is opening up places for people that are unable to find a place to park and they're homeless to park in, in that parking lot, at least this period of time. Um, our police officers are helping with people every day with, with all kinds of problems. And the, of course, nobody ever hears about that, but um, these guys are going above and beyond to help people. Uh, the Chaldean community is uh, banding together and raising money and, and helping, especially the immigrant population that, that doesn't understand what's happening and doesn't have access to food and, and uh, extra, extra income. So, you know, it's not one person. It's just there. I feel really blessed to live in the East County. I, fantastic people to live here. Tony? No, I've done it. Hi, Harold. There you go. I was muted. Thank you, Stacy. This is uh, too many buttons here. Okay, let's see if we can get Harold on. I think it would be great to have him. Great organization, one that we've honored at the Republican Party. Um, and uh, let's see if we can if he's back on here. Uh, where are you? Okay, in the meantime, let's do a poll. Speaking of uh, El Cajon, so we're going to do a poll here. Um, so you're going to see this, uh, those sitting at home. Bill, I'll read you read it for you because you may not be able to see it. The question is, what is the best city in San Diego County, and why do you say that it's El Cajon? Uh, <laughs> so we have a couple of options. Uh, so go ahead and vote. Uh, one is a great place to live and work. Second option is a smart and accessible mayor. Third is far enough from San Diego, and the third is all of the above. So we'll see what the uh, uh, Bill, I think you might be muted, uh, Bill. We can't hear you. Uh, so let's see here while this. Oh, okay. How's here. That? How's that? Okay, that's better. How's that? How's that? We're having an echo now. So I'm going to invite in Harold here. Is that right? well, let's see the poll. Okay, there we go. All right. Hey, yeah, just yeah. so you know, Tony, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Oh, good. Okay, I don't know. All right, happened. so we have the poll here. Sixty-four uh, percent say all of the above. Great, great place. That to was work. A, that was it. And uh, smart and accessible mayor, fourteen percent. So look at there. Uh, so we have Harold. Harold, can you hear us? Let's see if uh... that was smart of you to put in all of the above. That's that. That's uh... a. <laughs> Gives people a, a face-saving way to... Yeah, yeah, exactly. The results are, aren't uh, anonymous, by the way, guys. So, uh, no... Uh... Hey, let me, let me introduce you guys to a friend of mine. Sure. This is, this is, this is my dog, Doc. <laughs> Say hi, Doc. You see him? Hey, Doc. No. <laughs> Did you see him? We saw the head of him. Uh, here, let me, I can't see the... There, there, there he is. Hi, hey. Doc. Hey, buddy. He sleeps at wherever I am. He follows me. So when I'm here, he comes down and hangs out at my feet. So here, come here, Doc. Cool. Come on, come on, buddy. Come on, come on. Say hi to everybody. There he is. There's Doc. Hello, Doc. Okay. I'm gonna ask uh, Harold <laughs> to turn on his microphone. Can you hear me? Yeah, Harold. Yeah. Oh, excellent. All right, Harold, yeah, it's, uh, it's, your name came up here, and we, we know you, of course, and why don't you tell us some of the great things that uh, you guys are doing? And maybe introduce yourself for those that, that, that one person maybe that doesn't know. Sure. Um, Harold Brown, I'm the CEO of East County Transitional Living Center, where we're currently housing a little over 460 men, women, and children uh, who were formerly homeless but are now uh, in transition, uh, making their way through life to get back into back into the workforce and 
uh, back into permanent housing. Uh, sorry about the dropout when I, I was listening, all of a sudden it, it went off and I didn't realize it was asking Good me buddy. if I would speak. <laughs> so, so I'm not used to this particular uh, format. Um, great things happening at the center. People are uh, social distancing and doing everything they're supposed to do. We're very thankful to the community for reaching out uh, and support uh, during this time. As many know, about 85% of our revenue is generated by our work programs. And with the work shut down, uh, that the um, income that we had also went decreased. But, you know, the, the community people stepped up and many have donated and we're doing okay. Uh, doors are open and people are getting help. So I really appreciate the, uh, the help we've gotten and uh, we're, we're moving people on and getting people into permanent housing. I hope you heard that. <laughs> Thank you, Harold. Bill, you got to turn on your mic. And uh, for those, then before, well, that, guess, does that work? There we go. There we go. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. So great job. Think, I'm sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Great job, Harold. Well, that's good. Actually, that's a good uh, distance. We can see all of you are there, not just, uh, you know, parts of your face. So that's a great. Uh, uh, let's see. Brian says, great ways to help uh, East kind of transitional living, including via smile.amazon.com. Yeah, so your donation goes into there. Uh, at this point, uh, Bill, I want to just, um, we have a few minutes left here. I want to give use another feature of this thing and where uh, you update on Facebook, do you not, on your Facebook Yes, page? yes, I do. And so that's another way of uh, staying in touch. And so I want to make sure for those of you that don't, um, that aren't connected with the mayor on Facebook, I want to put something on your screen, that little uh, sidebar. If you don't see a sidebar, push those three little buttons. If you're on the computer, it'll open up the sidebar. If you're on the phone, I think you have to scroll up or down, but... Uh, um, you know, to find it. But basically there's a link that says connect with Mayor Wells on Facebook. If you click on that, it will not take you away from the webinar. It'll uh, just open another window and you can like the mayor's uh, Facebook page if you don't do that. Uh, That'd right. be great if you did. I would love that. Yeah, so let's get those uh, Let's get those numbers up. I'm going to take a look here and see what it looks like. Um, uh, let's see here. Oh, actually, we got the wrong, uh, we got the wrong one. Hold on. If you like Mayor, uh, uh, what's the Mayor, uh, uh, there he is. Okay, let's do that. Here we go. I'm going to remove that and uh, there we go. Bill. Facebook, there we go. And There you go. That's better. Sorry, that link was uh, wasn't working. It was sent to uh, Mayor of Coronado that we talked to just a couple hours ago. It also said Richard, said, "Richard, my stuff." That's yeah, <laughs> yeah. Richard's been great on this, leaning forward and with the beaches and everything. Uh, and uh, about a week ago, he was he started a uh, you know open beaches type of thing, and here we are having opened up the beaches. And then now he's doing one where a uh, petition where everybody's essential. And of course, you know, we all are essential. And so it kind of goes to what you're saying, Bill, to petition our government. I don't know how long people are going to have the patience to uh, just sit and do as they're told. The government has to balance things, uh, in my opinion. And so I'm hoping that they well, will. Well, I mean, the truth is nobody, nobody knows who who's going to provide enforcement. Uh, I can tell you in the city of El Cajon, uh, we're going to be really careful about how we how we enforce these things um we're going to try to protect our citizens as much as we possibly can i think some some cities might be more prone to enforcement and others be less All right the county the county has asserted their right to fine people um i don't know if that fine is going to change it's up to a thousand dollars right now but um as far as police action goes 
that's still up to the city in which the crime is committed. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, let's see, I'm gonna add, there we go. So, uh, okay, any other questions uh, for the good of the order here for the mayor? Um, we put up uh, the Facebook page and thanks Stacy for, for uh, sending that along as well. Um, I wanna say, Bill, just, we've known each other a long time, we're coming up in an hour, so I just wanna close with this and then you can make some closing comments, but I wanna thank you for, for serving as mayor. Uh, it seems very, uh, it might from the outside seem fancy, you know, the mayor of the El Cajon and so forth, but it's, uh, last I checked, uh, nobody does this for the money. Uh, uh, you do it because uh, as a, out of a sense of duty and wanting to serve and make a difference. And uh, sometimes you have to make hard decisions and you're in the middle of the, everybody looks to you for better or worse, uh, oftentimes for worse, that, you know, why isn't this happening or why isn't that, isn't that happening? And it might not be up to you. It might not be, it might be up to, to the city council or it might be up to the county or to the state or to the, to the, uh, uh, you know, to the president. So, but you're, you're the person, the mayor is the person that's the closest to the people. People come up to you with all kinds of things. And so you have to balance all those things. I know it's a lot of work. Nobody forces you to do it, of course, but I know you, you put your heart and soul into it. So I want to thank you for, for serving as the mayor and uh, being you know, the great mayor um, that you are. So thank you for your service and uh, thank you for your friendship. And, and I don't know if you want to make any closing, closing remarks. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for setting this up. What a, what a great thing. I wish we could do this for thousands of people, but um, maybe there will be a time as we get started and do this more and more. You do a great job with the Republican Party, and I know that, like you said, um, I know you're not doing it for the money, and I know, you, um, I know you care about moving the ball forward for common sense and decency and for protecting Americans, and that's what really anybody who's good at this kind of thing is doing this for um, for the good of of the people, for the good of the people we live with, and you know we all kind of raise our hands and say, "Put me in, coach." And sometimes we we're given assignments we like, and sometimes not so much. But I think those who really um, mean it will take whatever assignment they're giving and, and do it to to the best they can. That's what I see with you. So God bless you, Tony, and thank you for everything. And thanks everybody for for being on. In about four hours, you'll get a a, a webinar replay. Um, it's probably not appropriate, you know, uh, applicable to the people that are on here. But those that that registered and didn't get on, they'll get it in the email. You guys will too. So with that, thank you everybody. Um, yeah, I want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, please, uh, if if you want to, uh, you got my email. Send me an email, and I'd be glad to to have a conversation with you. Thank you everybody. Uh, stay healthy. Uh, stay safe. God bless. Over and out. All right. Signing off. Thank you. See ya.